It's Magic the Amateuring, everybody. And what is Magic the Amateuring? Magic the Amateuring is a state of mind, Megan. Oh, man. I'm really off today. What? What do you mean? I mean that my question came like three seconds after your statement. <laughs> Like I said, I felt time pass between you saying it's magic, the amateuring and me saying, what is that? <laughs> I literally, no, it was not like three the seconds. universe slowed down. I can tell you it was not three seconds. Everything, everything paused. The world <laughs> inhaled and exhaled and inhaled again. Uh huh. And then I asked my question. Well, you, I'm telling you, Megan's going through a lot oh, right boy. now. She's in I'm grad quite school. Tired. It's cold out there. It's very cold. Uh, but I got it, Megan. It was not three seconds. It was it, okay. nearly instantaneous. Really? Yes. I felt a <laughs> You've lot of trust time. Me. <laughs> Megan, magic the amateuring is a state of mind. To ans- answer your question, in that case, I am definitely not there. You're not in the magic the amateuring state of mind. I'm in space mind space mind yep. that sounds way more exciting honestly honestly it's just kind of it's like it's there's it's dark there's not a lot of light out here uh, it's, mm-hmm. it's quite cold yeah as it is in space if there's you're nothing fart, nearby it's a problem why because <laughs> you're in a space suit <laughs> oh i was thinking of myself not in a space suit. oh like in a space yeah i was like it's the ship. opposite of no i was just like in space just as me without a sh- without a ship or a suit oh my god are you breathing <laughs> yeah oh, i'm like fine you're like the star child exactly you're i can just i can handle it it's good i'm in a I'm hive work. state of mind a hive hi i'm in a hive mind go away <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Magic the Amateuring. Not our, only are we a state of mind, we're also a Magic the Gathering podcast. Absolutely. We are for players who are new to the game, who are returning to the game, or who like to, you know, slap a few cards on a table and call it a day. <laughs> that could be, that could mean any, that could be my grandma playing Pinochle. Does she really play Pinochle? She's dead, Megan. Well, then don't make a reference to that her. That was so insensitive of you. <laughs> it was sensitive of you to bring your own grandmother up <laughs> i'm i'm with it okay I'm with it well megan uh since you're so with it yep. i have decided we're gonna have yes. a big show today oh good i'm ready specifically because you seem to be just on top of it let's do like let's tackle something big let's talk tackle something momentous all right we will we're gonna tackle the oath of the gatewatch pre-release what i know it happened it did it sure did i remember it i remember it like it was yesterday because for me it was oh it was yesterday for you for yep. me it was two days ago i know i played two pre-release events oh yeah i wanted i, I would have done more if you know it was humanly possible to fit more into the day. You goddamn traitor. <laughs> Why am I a traitor? Going to pre-release events without me? You were at school. It's true. All right, Megan. Let's not fight. Well. Because we're going to talk about the pre-release on the show. We're also mm-hmm. going to talk about uh, some bands in modern, which a lot of Ooh, people are talking those about. Those happened. Those happened in advance of the Pro Tour coming up yep. early next month. Mm-hmm. So pretty exciting and controversial changes there. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to play a fun new game. Uh, we've, we've got an Oath of the Gatewatch pack here ready to be cracked. Yeah. And I'm expecting another foil um, Kozilex return in here for me. So Yeah, because that's worth a lot of money. I know. I opened one in my pr- first pre-release as my promo card and promptly sold it for $80. What? I didn't sell it for 80 I sold it for 60 Oh my god. Yeah. That's a lot of money. I was like, gotta unload this quick. It is not gonna be sixty dollars next week. I don't know no, that for it's sure, not. but that's my guess. My guess is that you are correct. But I think it's an, an ex- extremely good card and it's a very, very good card. Play. Um, you know. But that's a lot of money. I know. I bought some cards with it. Do you wanna know what I bought? What? Hanger back walkers. What? I know. I might be investing in a standard deck, everybody. Holy snap! Hold on to your butts. We'll talk about that in a second. Oh, man. What? I was going to say something, but it kind of pertains to modern, so I could say it later. Save or it. Or I could say it now. Save it in your tummy hole. Mm, I don't have one of those. <laughs> everybody has a hole in their stomach, Megan. How would are the you food get about, in? Are you talking about like a kangaroo pouch? Yeah. I, Maria, <laughs> it's you and kangaroos and platypi. <laughs> and koalas. Really? Yeah. Are you sure koalas have pouches? Yes. Do you know what? We're going to go to some interviews from the pre-release. And when we come back, I'm going to have either confirmed or denied that koalas have pouches. Because I'm not buying this. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Maria. 
Megan. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm are ready. you ready? I'm ready. How ready are you? I'm so ready that if you ask me again, I'd still say yes. <laughs> We're here at the pre-release. We've got our packs of Oath of the Gatewatch. I'm I'm ready to open this. This looks like a pyramid, like a secret tomb of some yes. ancient king. And I'm gonna open it and find the remains of yep. an amazing deck. <laughs> We're gonna have a Legends of the Hidden Temple moment. <gasps> that was um, a great show. Right? I know. Um, and I was just mentioning that I always I always am like the last person on the list, but now I'm not punished anymore that everyone just gets the same box. Yeah, we don't we aren't picking colors no anymore. And it's yeah. so much better, I think, because that was kind of a lot of pressure excited. and you would run out of colors. Exactly. Anyway, Megan, what card are you looking to open the most? <gasps> Kozilek. Kozilek? Draw cards up to up to seven again. Oh. How much does Kozilek cost? Ten. No big deal. No big deal. I want to open Linvala the Preserver oh, because I want to win every single game. <laughs> I wanna, oh, I want to open Crush of Tentacles. Oh, yeah. That one. And it's blue. <sighs> Megan, you and Blue should get a room. I mean, I paint room blue. <laughs> Good <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right, we're here with Ted. Yeah, Maria, I have to ask hey, everyone. one quick question. What? Why do I never get the chair? <laughs> Make it. I'm just always. Because you're the smallest. You can fit in any yeah, cubby you're hole. You're acrobatic, so. Ted, uh, you're, are you looking forward to this pre-release? <laughs> yeah, really much. I haven't been into pre-release in a couple uh, different sets, so looking to back, uh, get back into it. Oh. Play some big colorless spells and hopefully finally win a couple games at a pre-release. I've just been. Do you have bad luck at pre-release? Like one in three, the last five pre-releases. So, looking for the, the luck to change, you know, okay. fortunes maybe in my favor today, I'm hoping, so. What what uh, archetype are you looking to open? I want to play some colorless creatures. I want to... Yeah, me too. Oh yeah. I want to drain some life and gain some life, um, using that, that sweet uncommon that for one in a colorless, yeah. you, they lose a life, you gain a life. I want to do that. And then some of the rare colorless guys look really sweet, so. I agree. Hoping to just pack all those into a deck. Use the, uh, the, the, the common lands that you can tap for a colorless or like pay one and tap for a color. Like that, I think those are going to be valuable in both sealed and draft once things get rolling. And I think they're kind of going to be slept on early on. So yeah. hoping to get lots of those in my, in my pool. Just really. You know what I'm interested to see is if in a, any like average sealed pool, you can reasonably expect to play your colorless creatures with the lands and the creatures that make you know colorless yeah. mana provided. I think so because back in, in battle, there's those uncommon the uncommon set of, of lands that has tap for a colorless or like tap and a color and do some effect. I don't remember what they're called, but I think those along with the ones in, in Oath will really allow it. And so the other thing I'm excited about is all these uncommon um, dual lands that come in to play taps. That with um, the the uh, spells in, in battle that converge spells, I yeah. think will be another kind of slept on because converge wasn't very powerful in battle. Agree. But now that you have all these extra lands that can produce multiple colors, I think that'll be kind of a, a good strategy too. So if anybody's wondering why Megan just got up and ran away, it's because she got into this pre-release because she was the first person on the waiting list because Megan never signs up in time. Look, you guys, that would require so much planning. It would just be so much pre-planning to call in time. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with. That or she's VIP and you guys are pulling the, the VIP card out. <laughs> just at the right time. I mean, I might have something to do with it. Nicholas. Hey. So we've interviewed her on the show before at a pre-release. Yes, only this, audio this time. This is video now. Yes, we're in the future. Okay, so Nicholas. Yes. Oath of the Gate Watch. Yes. What card are you looking to open? There are um, cards that don't have any color in this set, I'm told. Yes, that's very true. My my seal pool is going to be completely colorless, but because the store doesn't have enough colorless mana to do it, I'm just going to run just islands. Nicholas, I got to tell I got to break something to you. Tell me. You can only play with waste the colorless land that are in your pool. That's it. You can't go get any more. All right. Does any, if anybody wants my pre-release box, they can have it right now. It's for sale. You're done. <laughs> That's it. You're out. That's all I wanted to do was just to play with those, and now you I can. You can. You can. If you have, if there's colorless lands in here, you can use but them. But not 17 of them. No, there's not. I mean, that would be very strange. <laughs> if you're, I just open a pack and it's just all waste. It would be. You'd probably have a horrible deck because yeah. you would have no good cards. I will say to answer your question truthfully, I have never uh, played green. It's Megan. Hi, guys. <laughs> I've never played green in a pre-release, and okay. if I open a Nissa, 
I will play green today, I promise. Okay, I was just handed my pre-release box Delightful. from the wow. store manager. Can I have your waist? <laughs> Nicholas, your don't waist? collude with me. This I'm is sorry. collusion. I'm sorry, is it, do I get a game loss for that? Yes. Okay. You get, you get I'm DQ'd. Down one. You're all You're the way out. Down. Oh, You're I'm out. all the way out? Collusion do I get to keep is... this or do I have to surrender it? You have to I'll take it. that. Oh. <laughs> Collusion is like treason, man. You just, just like that's, straight to the. That's death. Yeah. Yeah. Punishable by death. Punishable Sorry, by death. Right. Let's I really it. wish we hadn't had it on camera, but <laughs> <laughs> the first oh, Magic the Amateuring execution. So I'm sitting here. I'm done with the pre-release. I went three and one. Pretty good. Megan is behind me, still playing. And I just want to take this moment to talk about how it went. And I think it went pretty well for me. And I want to share some of the all-stars of my deck. Number one all-star, Inverter of Truth. This little fellow is the real deal. And I know when you cast him, you might be terrified uh, because you need to exile your entire library and just have your graveyard be your library. Turns out that if you cast him later in the game with at least like five cards in your graveyard, you're probably gonna win. Unless, of course, your opponent has bounce or locks it down with that um, ice card that encases them in some kind of strange ice. Containment, something or other? Anyway, it's blue. Uh, next up, All-Star, Prophet of Distortion. So I had three wastes in my um, sealed pool, which is extremely good. And uh, some other ways to make Scions so that I could sack the colorless mana. Anyway, this guy drew me so many cards. Worth it. If you don't have any colorless mana source, it's obviously not worth it. But if you do, play it. Next, All-Star, Thought Harvester. Megan's done! This guy is just straight Wait, up good. you think you get your own one minute, 20 second segment by yourself? <laughs> you just get to have like Maria's show for what? a minute? You were playing you like a Maria show for a minute? No, no, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Fine, we're done here. And we're back. Hey everybody, uh, those were some fun interviews from the pre-release. I'm sorry Megan stopped my final uh, video short because she was getting sassy. I'm sorry Maria thought it was okay <laughs> to just run around recording segments without me. Well, you know what, Megan? Maybe you should play faster. I did play fast. That hits close to home for Megan. I, it does. <laughs> I answered the question. Okay. As marsupials, female koalas have pouches where their young stay until fully developed. Unlike kangaroo pouches, which open towards the top, koala pouches are located towards the bottom of their bodies and open outward. What does that mean? Like That's a door? That's exactly my question. Like a furry flesh door? <laughs> Don't ever say that again. Oh, God. I, we need to find a video of this probably, of a right? a koala pouch? Yes, we uh, super do. I don't want to Google that. Oh, you have to. Koala Just YouTube it. Koala pouch. pouch. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. There's you. some images here, but... There's koalas in all of these pouches, which is really impeding me seeing how they function. Okay. Koala pouch. Okay. Here's one with a baby. Oh, Brian, can you find it? Uh, <laughs> it was the first hit literally when I Googled, uh, when I YouTube koala pouch. Just insert this, in insert it here. <laughs> Apparently there's a baby in this pouch of this koala that they're looking at in this video, but I don't see it. Let's skip ahead. Where is this babe? Oh, there it is. See, it's kind of like... Oh, yeah. But what does it mean, open outward? I don't know. I don't know. These people are really stalking this koala. That koala is a this dirty koala butt. Is... <laughs> I was going to say it's, like, understandably upset. Well, yeah. It's like... Yeah, the, we're like the paparazzi coming at this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <gasps> Sick. Mm, okay. Well, I think, you know, we've seen enough. Nope. Look at this one. It's what? the second one down. It looks so gross. Ew. Why are we watching this? You specifically needed help with this, Megan. I, sa I said Look not at it. There it is. That's how it opens outward. So it's like a... <gasps> oh, my God. That's disturbing. All right. Well, it's like I'm a poop. We... It's like a poop shoot, except a baby is in it. Are we going to cut this part out? Nope. That's staying in the show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we literally just had like three minutes of us looking koala videos well, that no one else can see. Well, if you come to Tolarian Community College's page, you can uh, watch some of these koala videos as well. Is that a promise? We're going to make the professor put Edit in a these video? Into the, no, you can search koala pouch on YouTube and you will find what we're talking then about. why do we have that section in there? Because, Megan, I want everyone to know how wrong you were. 
Look, I admitted that I was wrong. We can, I'm saying we can have the section where I was wrong. Anyway. Well, everybody. Pre-release. I'm having a great day. Okay, Megan. <laughs> do you, Since you're having such a bad day, do you want to talk first about your deck? I said I'm having a great day. Oh, I thought that was sarcastic the way you said it. It was. Okay. Uh, sure. I, I opened a pool that had inc- really crazy black removal. Uh, I had Ruinous Path and Demon's Grasp and Tar Snare and Grasp of Darkness. Wow. So I was like, heck yes, I'm playing black. I also had a rare in Dread Defiler. That card's great. Yeah. Six and a black f- uh, for a six, eight. And you can pay three and a colorless to exile a creature card from your graveyard. Target opponent loses life equal to the exiled card's power. So that was pretty Did you sweet. ever defile anybody like that? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what verb you would use. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you defiled? Yeah. For how much? What was your biggest defiling? <laughs> I, only like four. Oh, okay. Only like four. I didn't have a lot of really big creatures. Cool. Um, I also had a problem, Maria, where I opened no wastes. Uh, yeah, that's a story of the weekend. You know, people yeah. coming up to me saying, I have all these sweet colorless creatures. No way in my pool. That's not going to be the last time we hear of this as long as PPTQs yeah. are happening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would say as long as any sealed events are happening. Yeah, it's going to be the great um, tragedy of the world, exactly. I think. Exactly. I did have, like, I had a couple of Hedron crawlers, but that's a pretty big sacrifice. You it know? really is. Um, to play these little O2 creatures just as a way to, to get this mana in there. You, you have Corrupted Crossroads. That's true. I do have... I So I had that and I had um, a Crumbling Vestige and a Kozilex Translator uh-huh. um, as uh, ways to make uh, color... Did you... Specifically you didn't play them mana. this The Crossroads. Corrupted Crossroads, no. Because I only wanted to play the Crumbling Vestige because I had pretty heavy black and white mana you know, requirements. You know what card I like? Crumbling mm-hmm. Vestige. Yeah, I agree. I think it's great. It is pretty great. It's like essentially not a drawback. No, it's super cool. Like it comes into play tap, but you're adding a mana of a color to your mana pool when yep. it happens. So it's super cool. Yeah, I love that card. Yes, I also opened a Nissa, <gasps> Nissa. Voice of Zendikar. Oh, Nissa joined the party. Yes. But having been burned so bad on green yeah. uh, in BFC, I didn't play green, which I don't know if it was correct or incorrect. Hmm. I ended up playing okay. white. Let me I see also, what your green would look like. I also had a planar outburst. Oh, well, yeah. You know, white. and mm-hmm. I kind of needed some wind conditions. Um, I only really had that six. Oh, my gosh. This blue is black. sick. Too bad you can play it. There's not a lot of it, but you had two sky spawners. I know. There's oh. so little of it, though. Yeah. So, anyways, I ended up going with white and having, like, a very, like, allied allied themed deck. I also had Malakir Soothsayer, which I never got to draw a card with because my opponents always killed it on sight. Yeah. I imagine uh, so. Yeah, uh, your green is, you don't have a ton yeah. of green. And I gained a ton of life with my Undo War Cleric and some Vampire Envoys, which was a lot of fun. I had a Cliffhaven Vampire. So we had some flying. We had some life gain. It was, uh, it was all right. It was pretty slow and grindy sometimes. Yeah. Uh, how did you like the set when you were there playing at the pre-release? What did you think? You know, I don't know that I liked it as much as Triple Battle for Zendikar. And Sealed? And Sealed. Yeah. Here's where I'm going to put a thought down your throat. <laughs> I'm sorry I said it like that. <laughs> yep. Here's my opinion. I feel like Battle for Zendikar was very synergistic, right? Mm-hmm. And so it made for a pretty good draft where you could draft black, white allies. And that was a really fun deck. Um, I yeah. think that it was not a super great sealed environment format because it was so synergistic. So yeah. I had a lot of trouble. I mean, more trouble than you, you know, obviously in, in sealed. Um, I did not have a good win record whatsoever. Battle for Zendikar sealed when I went to P- PTQs, yeah. um, which may have something to do with it, but I, I don't know. I just felt like it wasn't super great. And so I was happy to get away from an environment that wasn't like, so you know re- you know requiring these synergies yeah um but maybe that's just because i didn't do very well at it uh i thought this played better better than battle for zendikar sealed 
Um, yeah. However, there, that's not to say there wasn't a problem with the wastes if you didn't yeah. have them in your pool. And I think that's probably, I think that's kind of where my opinion is is coming from, is that I had these like sweet cards, especially in blue, like you were saying, like mm-hmm. my blue is good, but I had two different blue cards that were really only good if you could reliably produce uh, a waste. colorless yep. mana. Mm-hmm. And like my deck just also Dang. couldn't do that. And so the fact that uh, there were cards that I couldn't play specifically because I didn't open the support for them and it wasn't like a small number of cards, right? Sometimes it's like, oh man, I opened, you know, a planeswalker, but I have no other cards in that color like Nyssa. It's like, oh, that's fine. I get it. Sometimes I can't play like a planeswalker. You can't play your bomb because you have nothing else in that color. But the fact that there was like a whole set of cards in my pool that I couldn't even really consider seriously playing because... Felt a little bad, huh? Exactly. And it was just sort of... And I I feel like having read a couple of other stories like that from the weekend or like heard a couple of other stories like that, it does seem to me that it's like, I don't know how balanced... Like for... I feel like it's the same kind of situation with synergy as you had for Battle for Zendikar where it works out well in draft. Again, the waste thing, it will probably be okay in draft because if you're drafting those cards, you're going to really prioritize wastes. But if you open them in your sealed pool and you don't open reliable ways to produce colorless mana, it's like you're just... You're just kind of screwed and you just can't play those cards. Correct. However, so. they only only one kind of deck wants the wastes, really. I disagree because I think that there's lots of... Like I said, like you were looking at these. So I had like these cards like Gravity Negator. Yeah. Which is a three and a blue for a two, three flying. Which is like... I play fine. that. It's fine. But really what you're playing it for is this. When Gravity Negator attacks, you may pay colorless if you do another target creature gains flying until end of turn. Yeah. The fact that because, like, if this card is in my pool and in someone else's pool, and it might just be so much better in their pool if they open the mana to support it, doesn't feel... Let me tell you something about this card. Great. I had this card in my sealed deck, and I played it. Mm -hmm. And I also played it um, in a friendly draft that I did as well. Yeah. I never once activated its ability in any game. Fair enough. So I think maybe perhaps my deck was like, I think both my decks were really strong, but I yeah. never neg- never activated it and I didn't feel bad about playing it. Yeah. Like I thought it was strong enough. Like in sealed flyers are strong, period. That's just yeah. the way it is. Again, like um, I said, it's a strong card, but the fact that like in s- its strength depends on opening a land type yeah. feels weird to me. Sure. Sure. Um, I guess we're going to have to see how this plays out. Yeah, definitely. Um, Perhaps we'll get burned and not have any waste in some of our pools at a pre-TQ, and then I'll be like, screw this. But uh, <laughs> And then you'll see where I'm coming from. You're not going to... I didn't open a single a single one. Yeah, that's and that's I unusual, that I think, but sad. Yeah. Um, so in my pool, <laughs> you'll see where I'm coming from. I had three waste. Three! Um, and I played... I probably had other ways to make waste as well. Um, there is a blue creature that taps for a waste. Um, I had a couple of him and of course he drawn crawler, which I don't think is a great card. Um, and I took him out pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I just didn't love him. Uh, they all started my deck, however, which was a blue, black waste Eldrazi deck, which I do consider to be three colors. Yeah. Was a gravity, uh, not gravity negator. Sorry. Um, Inverter of Truth, which I talked a little bit about in those interviews that we did earlier, which I think is one of my favorite design cards that I've ever seen come out of R&D because when you play it, you just feel terrible. (laughs) And I think that's how you should feel when you play a card like that. I mean, you're taking an enormous risk. In two games, I thought, I'm going to play this because if I don't play this, I'm going to die. So I have four cards in my my graveyard. Might as well. And I did, and I won two of those games because of gravity. No, sorry, Inverter of Truth. And then one game, I played it, and it got iced down with Containment Membrane. (laughs) And I was like, ugh. But that's exactly yep. how I should feel, right? It's a huge gamble. And anyway, I love that card. Yeah, super interesting, for sure. I mean, yeah, my deck was pretty insane. I had two Oblivion Strikes, which is just basically four mana kill anything. Oh, it's amazing. I had one Oblivion Strike in my deck, and it was just it was just so great. I also it's had... only great. It's a, yeah, I always take it. It's only great. Yeah. <laughs> Prophet of Distortion, uh, which is one, if you have enough waste to activate it, um, you can draw cards, right? No, no, no. I, I'm getting these mixed up. Thought Harvester and Prophet of Distortion. One second. Yeah. Thought Harvest. Okay, so Thought Harvester is a 2-4 flyer. Yeah. That's basically it. It processes um, when it... Whenever I cast a colorless spell, basically. Um, 
pretty good. It's a 2-4 flyer. Flyers are good and sealed. It can block basically anything. Um, and it has a little bonus for you if you really want. Ooh. And profit of distortion. Yeah, that's three and a waste draw card. Um, which and it's got one it's one blue for a one two devoid so that oh, card yeah that card was very good clutch don't yeah. obviously play it if you don't have any way to activate the waste on it but if you do that card was amazing um as well as seer's lantern i really like seer's lantern i had that as well oh, i agree to produce to produce waste and then you just scry if you're you know just hanging mm-hmm. out so it's ramp produce waste scry if you need to absolutely yeah very sweet that deck was great so i feel like profit of distortion is again it kind of falls into the cards that i was talking about where it's like right you open it and it's yeah. great in your pool because you have ways to produce colorless but from like if it was in my pool i'd be like well i wish i could play this yeah. card Mm-mm. the tapper as well the one three tapper for a waste you can tap anything yeah uh that guy obviously also insane if you have enough ways to turn it on yeah. um i did not have that in my sealed pool but i had him in draft and he was an all-star yeah. obviously so my second deck was green white colorless again which i considered three colors uh netcaster spider was actually the all-star for me very in nice. that yeah. deck because flyers 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 it kills almost any flyer yeah it totally <laughs> does because so. it goes up to a four three if it's blocking a flyer and yep. that is pretty big and that's pretty good so yeah. netcaster spider uh i also played a mono eldrazi deck in draft mm-hmm. and uh yeah basically i had the armor that gives what is it called i can't remember it's the armor and it gives plus one plus one for every creature card that shares a creature type with it yeah and it's equipped two. it costs one to cast and uh basically i, I tweeted this out but um it's what did i call it you call so, it cranial plating. Yeah, it's cranial plating. Stone, Stoneforge Masterwork cranial plating. Oh, yeah. I mean, Very it, cool. it is. <laughs> yeah. Full stop. <laughs> played in Allie's deck. Played it's in a it. rare, right? It's a rare. Yeah. If you see it's it. It's pretty crazy. I, it was my pack one, pick one. And I was like, let's do this. Nice. I have no idea if this card's any good. Yeah, absolutely. Turns out insane. Of course, you have to build around it. But what are they going to do? It's <laughs> They have to like kill everything, which I guess yeah. is planar uppers, but whatever. Absolutely. Just to like distill down, because I feel like I, as you're talking, my brain is slowly filtering all of these thoughts. I guess what, like the more that we've talked about our our pools and you've talked about yours, I guess like the general sense that I'm feeling, like my point of trepidation so far is that it just feels like the power level in a pool that can reliably produce waste is so much higher Mm. than the general power level of a pool that can't. Interesting. Because there are so many activated abilities with it and there are so many quality cards with it that if you have two pools that are completely identical card for card except one is it has three times as many ways to produce colorless mana as the other or th- like the, it's just much more reliable in producing colorless mana it's just going to have such a higher power level however it's go- also going to be more variable because you're playing three colors i mean unless you build it i mean you know like col- one color and waste or one color and colorless or something yeah like if that. you're able but, to build one yeah. color in a waste that would be pretty sick i think um i was thinking about this as well because i was wondering this is the way i was thinking of it which was a little backwards from the way you were thinking of it which was yeah. if i have enough creatures that produced waste or whatever and i have to build a two-color pool as you normally do in sealed yeah. well you're probably probably not going to have enough cards in one color to just build a color and then waste a, yeah you know color like green and colorless i i yeah. don't see that to be the i don't think that would be the case you'd have to be pretty lucky um but my question was am i taking is my risk worth the reward of playing three colors because playing three colors is going to be rough no matter what Mm -hmm. um sure there's ways to smooth it out because there are creatures that produce colorless mana there's things like seer's lantern out there so i think there's evolving wild you know evolving wild can also fetch wasteland (laughs) wastes it's better than it would be i think Uh, in a lot of sets um there's dual lands hanging around as well uh my question was like is it worth it for me to play three colors is is these are these colorless creatures offering me enough in a, of an incentive to play my colorless yeah. that that the payoff is big enough well and i think what it comes down to is there have definitely been sets in the past right it depends on sets cons of tarkir the answer to that question was always almost always yes in a sealed environment yeah. And so I guess this feels to me like one where the sealed environment answer to do I play three colors, in this case, one of the colors being colorless. Yeah. Um, it feels like the answer to that question is probably yes. Yeah, I, I think it is yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, but 
I'm, I'm interested to know how everybody's pre-release went out there. So tweet at us at MTA cast. What was your all-star card? That's what I want to know. Because as we begin to draft this set coming up pretty soon, uh, our evaluations are going to get uh, more and more important what we think about these commons and these uncommons. I, I found myself when I went and did the draft, like just kind of thinking, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like how good is this card in sealed? It's kind of a lot easier to assess than how good is this card in draft? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I want to know what were your all-stars? What were your all-stars? Did you play Cole Select, The Great Distortion? Tell me all about it. Ooh, Tell me I want to hear all about all the cards that you drew. <laughs> Megan just <sighs> wants to know like, how many cards did you draw? How many how cards did you, did feel? you draw? <laughs> How did it feel? <laughs> Megan, what are you looking to draft when this comes around, when the time comes? You know, I I am still, as we mentioned, I've been in school the past uh, two weeks just about. So I have honestly not had a lot of time to look at the full set. Yeah. Um, just because it's it, like even at the pre-release, there were cards that people are playing. And I was like, you know what? I've looked over the, pr- the spoilers as much as I could, but I haven't had time to go through and read all the primers yet, which I really need to do. Um, I mean, I'm I'm excited to see what looks different after uh, BFC. I hope green is draftable. Yeah. The, I mean, who knows? You never know. I think green is better. I don't think it's probably as good as the other colors still, but yeah. I think it's better. Maybe it's not as miserable as it was. Yeah, that's all we can hope at this it's point. It's gone from being the goddamn worst <laughs> to just being like, hey, buddy, you're not you can't sit at the big kids table yet <laughs> but you're we're not gonna make you eat in the backyard either whoa is that where you had to have thanksgiving when you were a child yeah get out yeah. in the backyard i mean we lived in texas so it was warm enough <laughs> there's <laughs> i'm sorry i'm just imagining you like on the concrete like yeah eating that didn't actually happen oh, but okay that's i mean fine <laughs> i had a thought and then it went away when I started thinking about you eating sadly in a backyard. Uh, but I would have been <coughs> eating. I love cranberry sauce. God damn, cranberry sauce is really good. You're a monster. What? I mean, I'll have a little bit of it. Oh, man. I will eat. I'll eat a lot of cranberry sauce. I bet you that I will. Is that why your hair is purple? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch out. It's the dangers. But like equal cranberry sauce to mashed potatoes. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. That's I mean, heresy. <laughs> what? Says so the Church of Potatoes? I am definitely am a card-carrying member of the Church of Potatoes, I Megan. didn't realize that churches had cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, can I see your Lutheran ID? <laughs> <laughs> your Lutheran ID is just your Subaru. <laughs> uh, anyway, this I remember my thought. Or a hot dish. <laughs> yeah, a hot dish for sure. Uh, Which is a casserole to everybody who doesn't know out there. In Mm -hmm. Minnesota, we call them hot dishes. Oh, but you can't call it a casserole. If you call it a casserole, the Lutherans will be like, I don't know you. like, get out. No, Mm. leave. Your soul is eternally damned. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, I had a level up moment. So I got to my second pre-release pretty late. They were very nice to let me in um, and play. And I only had 15 minutes to build my deck. Oh, shit. Yep. So I just went to town. I just sat down. I was like tearing things open like, all right, let's do this. But my level up moment was I was remembering back to Cons of Tarkir, which was three color, Mm -hmm. and building a sealed deck out of those pools. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I remember having like mild panic attacks trying to build decks. Like, and how many colors of mana? Like, do I need uh, four mountains or is five okay? And uh, six islands. Ah! And I was building a three color deck as you did. Mm Mm-hmm. And in this case, I would consider myself building a three-color deck as well. But I had taken myself down from, like, panicking about it to the point where I was, like, really confident in what I was doing. And I was like, yeah, I think that's the right deck. And doing it in 15 minutes and not freaking out about it. So, anyway, I had a level up moment and I recognized it. And I think that's important for everybody to recognize when you kind of move up in your magic deck building or whatever has been giving you trouble over the years. Like, hey... I got better at that because yeah. sometimes in magic it can be hard to remember that we're getting better as we play. Do you feel like there was something that helped you have that moment, like a particular skill or a particular set of state of mind or a particular way of thinking about something? I think it was probably uh, I always had trouble with thinking how many sources of each should of each color should I be playing? Yeah, to reliably be able to have that color when I need it. Yeah, and in cons I still didn't have a good idea mm-hmm. about that. And in this set, I 
just felt more confident that I was like, okay, I only have five or six ways to produce waste. I'm playing three creatures that need a colorless mana in order to cast it. Mm-hmm. I'm probably okay. okay. And not like having a brain hemorrhage about it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. what I would say. So yeah, please share with us your card all-stars from Oath of the Gatewatch pre-release. We want to know if you've uh, played any friendly drafts with the packs that you've won. Let us know how those are going as well, and hopefully we'll get on on that and be able to draft some more in this coming week, because this set is so fun. I, I My initial thoughts, I love it, but then again, I had waste in my pool. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until it doesn't happen. Okay, Megan. <laughs> Magic news! Hey, everybody. Uh, there were some recent bannings in Modern. Whoa, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Megan, hold up. What? I thought for sure with me doing that, like, teletype machine, you were going to come out as old-timey newscaster, and you didn't. You really are having I'm a rough really- day. <laughs> <laughs> Cut! Take two. Take two. Magic news. Hey there, everybody! It's your favorite friend, old time and newscaster. I don't know why I asked for and this. And I'm here to tell you, there's been some bannings in modern. Oh, Things are topsy-turvy in the deck-building world of modern right now. Because let me tell you about something. Summer Bloom has been banned. That means amulet combos off the table. But oh my goodness, do you know what's even bigger news? What? Extra, extra, read all about it. Splinter Twin is off the table, too. It's been cut. It's been chopped. It's been, it's been sent on a, on a boat over the Atlantic, (laughs) which at this time in history doesn't have a particularly good chance of reaching the other side. (laughs) Ah, so what Megan, there you go. Thank you. Trying to say. Is Am I trying? I think I pretty competently set it. Splinter Twin banned. Mm-hmm. Summer, Summer Bloom, Bloom banned. banned. Uh, and like I mentioned, that means that um, Amulet is off the Amulet Bloom. Or People, Bloom you know, you can still play Bloom Titan. You just are calling it Titan now. <laughs> uh, uh, well, the Summer Bloom is what what let you play things so early. Right. Because it's what the card that let you play um, three lands in a turn. And, uh, you know, Azusa Lost But Seeking will let you play an extra land. Um, but it's, you know, it's on turn three. It's not the same acceleration as no. three lands at all. It's a creature, so it's much weaker to re- creature-based removal. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like curtains for that deck. One deck we know for sure. That yes. is not going to be around anymore. Splinter Twin. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's not going to have the Splinter Twin combo piece no. anymore because Splinter Twin is itself banned. But I was actually playing uh, online uh, last night and I played a deck that was just Grixis Control. Yeah. It was uh, black, blue, red control. And in a lot of ways, a lot of Splinter Twin decks were or would sideboard into just a very blue red yep. controlling mm-hmm. deck yep. that happened to have sometimes this combo win piece. Um, and in place of that, the Grixis decks have something like Tassiger or um, Gurmag Angler, of all things, in there. So I I don't know that, you know, I don't know that we're going to see the end to those decks because that deck was still yeah, very strong. Yeah, it was strong. pretty good. Um, and it just, it was nice that it had this way to sometimes win on turn four. Uh, if it if it could. So a lot of people were upset <coughs> mm-hmm. by these bans, which Absolutely. were leaked a little early. But um, the reason for that was a few is a few reasons actually. Uh, we just recently had a GP or uh, an SCG Modern event, uh-huh. and I believe the Splinter t- Twin deck was nine percent of the format. Nine point three percent. Nine point three percent of the field, mm-hmm. which is quite large. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's a good deck yeah. and people thought that it wasn't an unfair deck. They, yeah. you know, like some people think that Amulet Bloom was really unfair. I agree <laughs> with that <laughs> after playing some modern online and practicing with Tron. And, um, yeah, sometimes you just, there's it's like, it just wins on turn one and you're just like, oh, yeah. okay. Um, um, I do think that, you know, Birthing Pod, the ban for Birthing Pod came down, I think about a year ago now, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And people were upset about that, too. Exactly. And for me, it's not that... And Splinter Twin was, was, you know, in all... It wasn't unfair the way that Amulet Bloom was unfair. But Birthing Pod also wasn't unfair. But if you looked at 
Grand Prix results. And I'm not saying that you look at one Grand Prix result, right? You can look through Grand Prix results over the past year and find one Grand Prix where maybe there was only one Splinter Twin deck in the top eight. But at the same time, you can look at multiple Grand Prix where there were four of them, right. four copies in the top eight. And Birthing Pod decks had the same dominance over over the format. And especially if you consider that Splinter Twin was only 9% of the field, for it to be 50% of some top eights, I think it was just kind of absurd in the way that uh, Birthing Pod was absurd. Another reason people were upset was because uh, Splinter Twin was just recently reprinted mm-hmm. in Modern Masters 2. And so a lot of people had stocked up on them. and yeah. uh, Some false confidence. False confidence there. Absolutely. So Yeah, I understand it completely. Uh, however, yeah. I do think it's a good thing for Modern to get more diversity. Hopefully that happens because of this. You know, it's not guaranteed yeah. to happen by any means. Maybe some other decks just take over and become the new Splinter Twin or the new Birthing Pod. Yeah. Uh, but and like I said, I think that in some way, um i don't know that it's right in the in the wake of the birthing pod ban for a while it's sort of like yeah that deck disappeared but then sort of other green green white value creature decks resurfaced there's like some collected company decks right um which are kind of in the wake of that that might not have happened uh had birthing pod never been banned and i think I wonder after, especially after playing against like this, again, this Grixis control deck last night, that it's sort of like, and I, this I think is when Wizards intent, that it just gives people room to build. Yeah. Um, and sure, it's going to make some people upset when they uh, went and bought out to see Varexarchs <laughs> uh, for way more money than you should spend for a 1-4 with Flash. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, one, I think that there's a lot of cards in that deck that are not going to lose value. You know, your lightning bolts are not going to lose value. Your snapcaster mages are not going to lose value because so many decks play them. It's a really strong card and there is still a blue red control deck out there. Um, And I think, you know, especially when the pro tour comes around, like I wouldn't be surprised if we see some really strong blue red, maybe blue red X decks hit in the field. I'm really excited for the pro tour. I want to see people build new things. I mean, mm-hmm. I've, I always say that on this show and I'm always looking for people to <laughs> innovate and have new decks. And I think standard right now has left me a little bit sleepy. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what they do with modern and with this ban um, ahead of the pro tour. Maybe we'll get to see some really interesting innovations. Maybe we'll see some Eldrazi decks. I know that black Eldrazi have been a thing in modern. I'm wondering if perhaps there's another kind of Eldrazi build out there that's going to mm-hmm. sort of take the forefront. I don't know. I'm really excited to see I'm what's really new. I'm really excited to see some lantern control. Oh boy, you guys. Oh, All right. So we've been the deck playing that I was playing last night. <sighs> Megan I love and I it. have been playing some modern uh, in anticipation of this pro tour. We were lent some decks online by a very nice listener. Mm-hmm. Um M- Megan is sitting here dreaming of lantern control because really that's what am. she's playing and it's just terrible. It's beautiful. Ugh. Make it's amazing. It. I haven't been this in love since Finx's revelation. <laughs> we did talk about lantern control on a previous show. Basically, mm-hmm. you make it so your opponent can literally do nothing. Oh my goodness, it was so amazing. The last person I played was like an like a mentor mentor burn, like red white yeah. monastery mentor burn, and like they got me to one. But I had at that point I had no cards in hand and an ensnaring bridge out and they had no cards and they had like so many creatures Maria they had so many creatures but I had I had the lock on yeah I had the lock and at at some point I just got out like enough codex shutters and ghoul collar bells that it was like there's no you're way you're never drawing back. burn like you're never gonna draw it because I can make sure that it never happens <laughs> it was beautiful you're was you're really a terrible beautiful. person. <laughs> I've been playing Tron, which I mentioned earlier, and it's really fun. And a lot of people are thinking, oh, maybe Tron will get kind of a boost from these bands. And I think Tron is a good deck. It does some really unfair things like Mm -hmm. casting Karn off of three mana. However, it's not easy to assemble. Yeah. Sure, if it's in your opening hand, but the (laughs) likelihood of that is not super great. And it's only happened to me once. And even if it is in your opening hand, you're not guaranteed to have those lands stick around thanks to things like Ghost Quarter and other things like blow up your land. So... Uh, yeah, I I really enjoy it, and yeah. I think it's fra- just fragile enough. Um, Twin was one of the decks that played Blood Moon, actually. Yeah. Um, which is one of the prominent decks, which also made it very good. I wonder if, in part, um, sort of what inspired the uh, Amulet Bloom ban was the fact that they were bl- banning Splinter Twin, because that was one of the decks that notoriously could do very well against it, because they played... 
uh blood moons and yep. blood moon wrecks amulet bloom yeah yeah uh blood moon wrecks a lot of decks <laughs> yes same for same for tron for tron so, which yep. i think is why people might wonder if it gets a little boost because like the grixis control deck can't necessarily play blood moon because it's relying on a lot more non-basics do you know something um, i learned sure there's what? a blood moon on a creature oh yeah i uh, didn't know that until the ma- other day ma- made just of the moon yeah yeah it's two and a red for a two two yep all your la- all your non-basics are mountains sad it was a sad day oh, when man. i saw that guy the thought that i was having earlier when you mentioned selling your card for 60 dollars yeah that beautiful foil yeah it was insane um, is that i haven't traded them away yet because i just keep sitting on them but right now the two expeditions that i opened i could trade away on puka trade and I'll literally get like almost the entirety of lantern control <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna do it megan I don't know. Like, I don't know when to when to trade away <laughs> these expeditions because so far they've well, when is only there a gone up. But when is there a deck you want to play? Like, when are you going to say it's worth it to me that I want to play this deck? No, but I'm saying like right now. So right now, this I have a polluted delta and a hollowed fountain. Yeah. And when I first added, like, I just like you know put it on there so that I could look at the at the how much it's worth. When I first put it on, it was about two hundred points. Yeah. Or, you know, $200. Yeah. However many points that translates into. I think it's like 20,000 points because it's two extra zeros. Anyways, um, it was like 200. It's now 268. Wow. Uh, and Hallowed Fountain, when I put it, it was, that was only like four weeks ago. Not even maybe. No. Um, was 60 and now it's like 86. Whoa. So I just don't know when. If you have any place to refer us for um, speculation on expeditions, I would love to read it because I just don't know how long to hold on to these suckers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the answer is I'm going to hold on to them until I get the most out of until them. Until they become a black lotus. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's like the way that you make coal or diamonds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is you just apply enough heat and pressure over time and it becomes Comes a black, a black lotus. lotus. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly mention uh, when I talked about earlier in the show standard and I might be getting interested in playing for basically the first time in my life, my yeah. magic life, uh, was because of this deck uh, that Patrick Chapin posted on SCG and it's completely colorless. Oh, I know. I'm exciting. very excited because I've been hoping for like a really cool, different Eldrazi colorless deck for a long time now. And that's exactly what this is. And it's very similar to the budget Eldrazi deck that I talked about playing in other shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is red black. So this deck is the same kind of concept. You play hanger back walker and endless one and you play them very early on and then you just slap a ghost fire blade on them and go to town. Yeah, very cool. So I love this list that he's put together. I want to wait just a tiny bit to see how uh, how good it turns out to be before I, I super invest. Um, but yeah, this list, I believe Frank Karsten also produced a black and colorless deck on Channel Fireball. So I'm kind of watching this to see what happens. Um, I wrote awesome. about this in an article that's going to be coming up. You can find it on dailymtg.com uh, about these kind of crazy decks that people are building in advance of the very first Friday Night Magic after OGW has been released. My goodness. Very exciting. Speaking of articles, you can find both Megan's and mine first Mm -hmm. eight daily mtg articles on dailymtg.com uh, right now megan's about pre-release stories we mentioned in an earlier show single tier some of them are really sweet and i wrote about release day stories mm-hmm. so uh, also another tear jerker story <laughs> <laughs> so go and check it out you also see a really disturbing picture of me as bob ross wonderful it's just a plug for you there um try not to scream when you see it <laughs> Flavor Text Theater presents Movie Bitches. Aw, snap. We are cracking a pack of Oath of the Gatewatch. Ooh. Ooh, that new card. Smell. Super new, actually. Speaking of smells, your cat smelled. <laughs> just letting you know. Thank you. For those of you watching the video, this cat, cat smells. was just sitting on my lap and he smells. Oh, God, he does. I told you. Like, you didn't believe Why me. Why does he smell so bad? I don't know. Your cat smells really bad, though. He was, oh, go clean yourself. <laughs> you disgust me. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to okay. pick up some of these cards at random mm-hmm. and make up some movie pitches and pitch them to you and hopefully make some great, some great cinema. Ooh, I've got one for okay, you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is like, it's, your, your, it's a classic World War II fighter pilot drama. Ooh. Uh, it's basically like a remake of, of Pearl Harbor or what's that other one? 
there's another one, right? Torah, Torah, Torah. Mm, uh, I don't think so. That's but sure. old. That's an old one. All right. Uh, so it's about, right, it's just, uh, and he, he, this this allied pilot is able to take down, just takes down so many of the Axis planes just over and over again. And he's, he's like the scourge of the skies. Uh, and, you know, it's about, like, their pursuit of him. And finally, at the very end, like, he does get captured. And you're left wondering, did he survive the war? Oh. Who knows? But you have to find out by watching Sky. I scourer <laughs> great film yeah this one uh, is kind of it's like a propaganda a religious propaganda film <laughs> okay um it stars saint peter as uh himself and <laughs> what's happening is uh, satan's armies have like managed to get their way into heaven you uh-huh. know like they've tricked They've tricked dear old St. Peter. They've dressed up as good people from Earth and like, we're here in heaven. Mm-hmm. And their forces like slowly infiltrate yeah. getting in. And soon, sooner or later, somebody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Peeps are getting murdered. People are doing, you know, crack off of hookers. There's bad guys up here. Wow. This is not how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, good news. Um <laughs> They also, by the way, in the in the process of this, trap Peter. They tie him up with some ropes somewhere in, okay. in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and someone's like, oh, my God, all these bad people are getting in. Hold on. Every, somebody call the gate watch. <laughs> oh, my God. Call the gate Worst watch. rare. Call, yeah, it's terrible. Um, you know, and that answers my question that I've always had, which is, can you be tied up with ropes in heaven? <laughs> yes, my The can. answer apparently yes, is can. yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is like, um, you know that, that movie that came out that was based on the book Wild about like yeah. the woman who like hiked the Appalachian Trail or whatever, finding herself. It's kind of like a cross between that and Into Thin Air. Ah. It's like a, it, but with the way less, way less people dying. Okay. Um, it's like a, it's like a, like a finding yourself while mountain climbing. Oh, um, nice. You know, drama of, of sorts, like personal drama. It's just called Mountain. <laughs> Mine is a is a TV show, mm-hmm. and it's going to be controversial because it's coming back, and it's hosted by Paula Dean. Ooh, <laughs> here's uh-oh. here's the crazy part, though. Okay, Paula Dean has lost three hundred pounds. <laughs> I don't know what weight she's going to be at. I think that that would make her like negative something okay well she lost a lot of weight okay and uh, she's cooking healthy this time around she's oh. not cooking with her signature butter 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 okay no the name or of racism this, or racism <laughs> the name of this new program is called searing light <laughs> she makes a lot of fish that's nice nice <laughs> very nice canceled um, immediately okay my, this mine is a, a pitch it's you know in the vein of like sherlock's been really popular yeah or um whatever that other one is that's also on television that's about Sherlock. Uh, but in this oh, one, yeah. it's Watson is tired of just being the underdog constantly uh, to this genius. He and he's like, can nobody notice that this man could not function on his own if it were not for me? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And he basically he takes over and he turns their lives around and he becomes like the, the one who's in charge. Ooh. It's called Elemental Uprising. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely the best one I've ever heard and my new favorite. <laughs> All right. This one is about a car used car salesman. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he's just kind of bad at his job you know Mm -hmm. it's like the beginning of fargo like he's kind of trodden upon everybody Mm -hmm. walks all over this guy he can't sell any cars Mm -hmm. um but finally um emra cool shows up this is a magic crossover oh and is like let me help you out (laughs) through her you know spaghetti mouth let me help you out and um she calls kozlek in she's played by billy bob thornton yeah even though she's a she (laughs) Kozlek comes in and is like, okay, I will help you sell cars. And the guy's like, oh my God, okay, sure. How are you going to help me? He's like, just sell one model, like specialize in something. And he's like, oh, okay, well, that's pretty weird, you know? He's like, no, you'll become an expert at selling this one car. And the guy's like, okay, fine. Well, Kozlek eats him, obviously, but he decides to keep taking over the business. um, And it's called Kozlek's Pathfinder. (laughs) Because he only sells Pathfinders. Because he only sells Pathfinders. (laughs) Yep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yep. It's a terrible right. movie. Um, Don't see this it. one is this is a rom com about um, who else? Mathematicians. 
uh it's a it's about a bunch of like you know like university uh, like phd level mathematicians um who are in the middle of like like i'd watch right, that it's uh these two mathematicians like bump into each other at a math conference um and it's a it's a man and a woman and like they like they meet and they're like really attracted to one another but then they f- they fly back to their different respective universities yeah, yeah. uh and they're probably two universities that are at odds with each other right so we'll, we'll just say harvard and stanford I, are they at odds i just created that rivalry <laughs> I don't whatever know. it exists now okay <laughs> they're rivals um and the and the guy's at stanford and he meets another stanford uh woman and he like kind of falls in love with her but you realize that she's actually like kind of a terrible person and the whole time you're like no 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 hold out for that other lady you actually liked but they end up getting like engaged oh, but then no. uh to, like he goes to another uh, math conference and while he's away his that the, his fiance is cheating on him yeah and he bumps into that first mathematician again this is great and he's like oh my god this is the person i should be with and he discovers that his fiance was cheating on him yeah of course it's called comparative analysis <laughs> I was like, why are they mathematicians? Okay. It came all around at the end. All right. I've got another rom-com for you. Oh, let me hear it. So this is a rom-com about a business and it's a lady who's running it because she's had to break up with so many people in her life. Mm -hmm. Like she's had a lot of horrible guys who have been just assholes to her and she's just done with it. So she starts a business while she will break up with your significant other for you. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And of course she like meets the love of her life while she's doing this and she has to, and you know, break up with, you know, it's not the, okay, how does it It's not the person who hires her. It's It's the person that she's breaking up with. Correct. Correct. But eventually, you know, that person finds this. out. I just, just want to say that. I mean, yeah, she find, he finds out that she yeah. was the one who did it. You know, and of course, he's like feeling betrayed and mad. And he's like, oh, no. But her specialty is that she like breaks up with them super fast. Like, that's yeah. the deal. And so uh, that was it. And they're never going to see each other ever again. Of course, somehow they, they meet when she starts her new business about um, getting people together very quickly. Aww. Um, so, yeah, first it was This about- is a real movie. <laughs> I think it actually yeah, is. Yeah, it actually is. <laughs> so first she broke up with people really fast. Now she gets people together really fast. She's like some yeah. speed dating thing. Yeah. Anyway, it's called Expedite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing this motherfucker. Call me Warner Brothers. Oh, we're going to make a million dollars. Okay, I have um I have oh, like I a like high school a high school dramedy for you. Ooh, okay. Um along the lines of like I guess Easy A was mostly a comedy. It was hilarious, though. Really? Have you ever seen it? I didn't see it. Oh my god, Maria, we have to watch it. It's okay, really great. Um, so, anyways, um, and it's a it's about a girl who like is her life is just not together. And to be fair, it's not her fault. Like her, uh, her her parents are like not together at all. Her mom is constantly traveling for work. Her dad is a like just terrible of like keeping their home life together. Uh, everything's a wreck, and she never has any clean laundry. And she like goes to school one day and she's not wearing any underwear (laughs) because she doesn't have any clean underwear um and while she's wearing she's in high school okay yeah she's like a senior in high school right um and she ends up getting she's like she gets a little bit picked on at school um because uh again because like she doesn't have it together um and like so while she's at school she gets pantsed but of course she's not wearing any underwear but you know what she uses the momentum from that to make herself infamous and to turn her life around so instead of being like cheerleader popular she's like underground popular cool um being being super alt and uh telling people about how kick ass she is uh it's called zada's commando Oh my god! These movies were of our. These are some of our best work. <laughs> yes, ever. it really is. Well, you know, a, a new a new set is so energizing for the creative mind. I agree. Wow, we made some really great films here yeah, today. <laughs> we really did. I think we really did. Well, everybody, that's our show for this week. Uh, thanks for listening. And like we mentioned, we want to hear your pre-release stories. Please tweet at us at MTACast. Do you have a good movie for Gift of Tusks? I thought of one, but it wasn't super great, so I didn't say it. <laughs> Maybe nice. you have a better one. Send Absolutely. us a tweet. In 140 char- characters or less, it'll be like a game of Balderdash. 120. Really? Isn't it? 
I don't know. Who knows, you guys? Try 140, and if it cuts you off, keep then typing you know as if done. it didn't. Did you hear that Twitter, like, maybe it was a rumor that's been debunked, but they're like, oh, we're going to allow a million characters or whatever. Well, I thought it was like 10,000. Yeah. I did hear that. I don't know if it's true, because it I sounds hope, like a really stupid idea. I hope it's not true. It'd be the worst. Who knows? I read a book on Twitter. Should we Snopes it? Yeah, Snopes it right All now. Right. While you're doing that, I'm going to tell you to go to Tolarian Community College on YouTube and check out this video. We're not only an audio podcast, we're also a video podcast. So you can watch a video of this as well as uh, thousands, that's not true, lots of videos from the professor, including a collaboration with our good friends over at the Command Zone. Uh, they made a great new series of comedy videos, and they're really funny and awesome and amazingly edited because, yeah, they're like for real you guys yeah. um and i and i just love them so go over the, there and check them out that's a plug check out megan and my articles on dailymtg.com we're super honored to be writing for the mothership so we would love it if you'd read and share if you like them let yeah. us know what you think actually i would be interested to hear your feedback it's my first time being a columnist so i'd like to know what you think you can shoot us an email magic the amateuring at gmail.com if you have an idea for a column that you haven't seen in the magic world let us know about it and we can pitch it and you know maybe you'll read about it in the future has anyone ever snopes snopes <laughs> like <laughs> maybe snopes is just a big like what if you lie. typed snopes into snopes's search bar just to see and they were just like snopes is not real <laughs> That would be the best. That would be surprisingly meta. Oh, Snopes. I hope that's what happens. Oh, if if you're a programmer for them. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Wouldn't that be amazing? Other things we have to tell you about are Patreon. Patreon.com slash MTA cast. Go there and support the show. You can get free gifts like stickers, wristbands, t-shirts, playmats, which, by the way, will be printed pretty soon uh, within the next month. So anybody who's pledged at $10 and is waiting for their playmat and t-shirt, we want to ship them out at the same time for you. So you will be getting them sometime in the near future. They're going to be awesome, and they're also going to be for sale on magictheamateuring.com. Our t-shirts are already for sale there, and we're about to have a 3X size for gentlemen, so that'll be coming up. Watch the Twitter or for ladies. that. Or yeah, so I mean, we've got we've got all the sizes coming at you. Absolutely. In the near future. Well, it's not on Snopes, oh, so I okay. think I think it's it's considering it. Okay. Uh anyways, it's apparently about trying to compete with Facebook. Ugh, no. Yeah. I'm not going to use Twitter like Facebook. I know, right? I would never. Mm. -mm. I wouldn't use Twitter if it wasn't for magic, so Twitter should really be paying magic. Yeah, they really in should. In my opinion. <laughs> Anyway, All right, everybody, that's our so show. It's, uh, it might be happening. Who, Who knows? knows? Look up some koala pouch video if you really want to go to bed disturbed tonight. It's weird. It's Creepy. like those birthing videos you had to watch in middle school. You'll never be the same. I don't think I had to watch those. Oh, you're lucky. I do feel lucky. Well, my stinky cat is back, so it's time for us to say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>